equals 10. All right, here is yet another example. Notice this one's a bit different because I have two different radicals. Our first step is supposed to be to isolate the radical. So in this case, you would just pick one and isolate it, okay? And then go from there. So let's say I decide to isolate this radical, the square root of x minus 5. So I need to move the other to the opposite side. So it's a positive root x. To remove it, I would subtract root x from both sides. And that gives me this negative square root of x minus 5 is equal to 1 minus the square root of x. We remove the radical by squaring both sides. And again, we have two terms over here. Remember, squaring means to multiply it by itself. So we are multiplying. I'm going to go over to the side here. 1 minus the square root of x times 1 minus the square root of x. Now, this looks tricky, but let's go one step at a time. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative root x is just negative root x. Now we take root x times 1. Negative root x is negative root x. And negative root x times negative root x is positive x. Okay, you take root x times root x, you get root x squared, or just x, because the squared and the, x and the squared cancel each other. Simplified, we have 1 minus 2 root x's plus x. Notice, unfortunately, we still had a radical in our problem, and that's going to happen anytime you have two radicals. So we have to isolate the radical again. So now we're going to move everything from the right-hand side over to the left-hand side, except for the radical, of course. Okay. As I'm doing that, notice my x's cancel, and I get negative 6 is equal to negative 2 times the square root of x. At this point, you could either divide both sides by negative 2, or you can go ahead and square both sides. Again, we want to remove that radical. If we square both sides, do not forget to square the 2. So on the left, negative 6 squared gives me 36, and on the right, two, negative 2 squared is 4, and the square root of x squared is just x. Let's go ahead and solve that. Divide both sides by 4, and I get that x is equal to 9. Now, before I circle that as an answer, I'm going to check to make sure it works in my original problem. So I'm going to go back to this original problem up here, replace all the x's with 9s, and see if it works. So I have the square root of 9 minus the square root of 9 minus 5. Does that equal 1? The square root of 9 is 3 minus 9 minus 5 is 4, okay, and the square root of 4 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. So yes, 1 does equal 1. x equals 9 is a valid answer. Okay, we have one more example. Okay, so looking at this, I notice I have a radical. What's the first step in a radical equation? It is 2. Isolate the radical. So I move anything that's not under the radical to the opposite side, and I get the square root of x plus 3 equals 1 plus x. Okay? Now, notice again, to get rid of the square root, I square both sides. And again, squaring over here on the right-hand side, that would mean 1 plus x times itself, which gives me 1 plus x plus x plus x squared, or x squared plus 2x plus 1. I notice again I have x squareds and x's. To solve that, I have to either factor or use the quadratic formula. To do that, it has to be equal to 0. So I'm going to move everything to one side. And subtract the x and subtract the 3, and I have 0 equals x squared plus x minus 2. I'm hoping this factors so I don't have to use the quadratic formula. Are there factors of negative 2? 
that adds equal the middle term 1x. A factor of 2 or 2 and 1. If I have a positive 2 and a negative 1, those would multiply to be negative 2 and add to be positive 1 in the middle. So my factors are x plus 2 and x minus 1. Next step, set each one equal to 0 and solve it. So now I have x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. Now I have to check both of those. Again, you can't just accept them as answers until you've checked them. So we go back to our original problem and replace all of our x's. I'll check negative 2 first. So I have 4 times negative 2 plus the square root of negative 2 plus 3 equal 1 plus 5 times negative 2. Is that true or false is what I'm trying to decide. So I get negative 8 plus 3 minus 2 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. Over here, I have 1. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So on the left-hand side, negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. On the right, 1 minus 10 is negative 9. Those are definitely not equal. So x equals negative 2 is extraneous. It's not one of my solutions. Let's try x equals 1. So again, we go back to our original problem. 4 times 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 3. Does that equal 1 plus 5 times 1? This gives me 4 plus. 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Over on the right-hand side, I have 1 plus 5. Does 6 equal 6? Yes, it does. So x equals 1 is a valid solution to our problem. x equals negative 2 was not valid, so our only solution is x equals 1. Okay, so it is absolutely mandatory if you want to get the right answers. Check your answers on radical equations.